Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. And here we are once again with the mission to bring to those who are interested, those who are interested, those who are thirsty and hungry, those who are lost, the lost coins, those people who want salvation. So, I'd like the Holy Spirit, I'd ask the Holy Spirit to give me the right words to speak to the right people. I do not want to be here throwing pearls to the pigs. I want pearls, the pearls that he has been giving me to go to those who are truly thirsty, those who are willing to pay whatever price in order to receive the right, the power to become children of God. That's the reality. Just for you to have an idea, my friend, just for you to have an idea of the war which is, obviously, you who still haven't received the Holy Spirit, you are facing this war, and your war is against the flesh. Your war is against your own flesh. It's not a war against other people who are trying to harm you. No, your war is interior. It's inside of you. It's in your mind. When you, when you allow yourself to be carried away by your heart and your emotions, then you lose this war. You lose it. And that's why your life does not change. You know the word, the word of God. You have knowledge of it. And still, you haven't been able to see it materialized in your life. That's the problem. Unfortunately, disgracefully, with a heavy heart, we know what the problem is. And we know the solution as well. The problem is that between the problem and the solution, there is a bridge which every person needs to cross on their own. No one can cross this bridge for somebody else. The belief, the faith is something very personal. I can pass on to you faith. But I cannot leave this faith that I pass to you on your behalf. I have to leave it for myself. And the faith, my friend, faith, this faith is not a feeling. Faith has nothing to do with feelings. Faith has everything to do with obedience to the Word of God. However, in order to obey the word of God, I have to go against my will. I have to go against the word of other people. I have to go against the word of the world. And this hurts. This really hurts. It's really painful. Because it's trending. Sin is always trending but not righteousness. Unfortunately, people leave justice and righteousness aside. It gets old and it's forgotten and they immerse into sin because sin is trending. That's the reality. So, those people who know the Word of God, they know about this but they cannot overcome sin. 
So they will never see results in their life. They are worse than those who are outside in sin, who don't care about God at all, what is written, they couldn't care less if they are hurting anybody, they are just enjoying life. This is it. Sorry for saying it this way, but we from the old days, we say what we have to say. But the reality is that the person knows the truth, but they do not convince themselves of the truth. And because they are not convinced of it, then they delay, they are always delaying their surrender because they want to enjoy a little bit more of this world. This is it. The person thinks like this, oh, come on, how can I give up on my youth? How can I give up on my dreams? How can I give up on my personal projects? But that's it. It has to be this way. See that the Apostle Paul, led by the Holy Spirit, wrote that this type of people still haven't resisted to bloodshed. To bloodshed, which means they haven't gone to their limits. They can still bear the suffering and the pain a bit more. They can suffer a bit more. You know, what can we do? It's not myself that have to be here convincing anybody. I'm here preaching and teaching the Word of God and transferring to you what God has given me. However, those who think, we obey. Those who don't, will be wasting time. So, the truth is that the Holy Spirit, imagine you, the Holy Spirit, you have the God or the Creator, the eternal Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ sends the Holy Spirit to dwell, to make His dwelling place inside of us. You know that. You want it. But this is not enough. The saying goes, you know, people who have nonsense talk out there in the pubs amongst drunk people. They say that where there is a will, there is a way. But it's not really true. To will is a desire, but in order for you to have it, which is the Holy Spirit in this case, and to enjoy the privilege of having, of living in righteousness, to live a life that is righteous, righteous and blameless, to live at peace and to live in joy, righteousness, peace and joy. This is the kingdom of God, which Jesus came and He offered to everybody. Whoever wants it, thank God. So, you have to make the effort, you have to sacrifice to your limit, you have to deny your flesh, deny, deny your flesh, your will, your lust, your desires. You deny it. You say no to yourself, to your desires, which are unrighteous, but they also bring problems. And then the person has no peace. Not even a second of peace. Not even a second of it. And because they have no peace, they won't have joy either. The joy of the Holy Spirit. They may have the momentaneous joy. They, hear, they hear a joke, so they laugh. Very well, nice. But afterwards, after the joke is over, the laughter is over and sadness gets back. So, the person who does not want to sacrifice to bloodshed, 
to the limits, the limits. They live a life of unrighteousness, which means of sin. They live a life of conflicts, internal conflicts, anxiety, fears, insecurities, etc., etc., doubts. And they live a sad life, a life of sadness, all because they want to remain, they want to remain in unrighteousness. They want to continue in sin. They do not want to let go of sin. They do not want to. So, they will continue to suffer until the day, if this day ever comes, until the day that the penny drops. The problem is that the penny does not drop and the person dies and then there is no solution. There is no prayer. There is no service for the seventh day. Therefore, my friend, this is the truth, the naked truth. You still haven't resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. This is the reality. Look, by my personal experience, I liked the word. I heard the word and I was like, wow, what a word, what a prayer, what a service, how wonderful. I would feel very good inside of the church. But as soon as I would leave the church when I was outside, I would enjoy sin as well. So it was like this. Inside of the church, I would feel good. I would feel forgiven. I would feel righteous because I was in church. I was praying. I was singing, worshiping. I was saying yes to Jesus. I was very well inside of the church. I supposedly had, or oh, I was in righteousness. I had there some peace, the peace of the church, of the environment. And I was also joyful. But when I would leave that environment, that holy place, there outside, I would immerse into sin again. So the conflict would come. The sadness would return. Oh, I shouldn't have done this. Why did I do it? You know, the remorse, not repentance, not repentance, but remorse. And I continued on with that situation until I turned 19, almost two years this way. Until one day I saw my sin. I saw it. The weight of it, the horror it is. I saw, I saw my soul. Let's put it this way immersed in sin and its destiny, which was hell. I saw it. And when I saw it, then. Ah, then I, I, the Holy Spirit introduced me, showed me the Lord Jesus, and He received me, and He washed me, He purified me, He saved me. Just for you to have an idea, I already gave my testimony many times. The experience I had was so glorious, so magnificent, so wonderful, there are no words to express. Only those who went through these know what it is. But it's something so glorious. Just for you to have an idea of how great it is. I was 19 at the time. So those that time I said, my God, I don't want to live anymore. Take my life. Because I don't want to run the risk of losing what you have just given me. I don't want to run the risk of losing it. I asked to die, but I asked for it with all my heart. I do not want to live. I let go of my life. I was young, just 19. So, I say this way in order for you to evaluate the greatness that is to receive the Holy Spirit. 
it's much more, much, much more than we can even speak about. Only those who receive the Holy Spirit know what I'm talking about. Those who haven't received Him, what can I do? They, will, they won't know what it is. Why haven't you received Him yet? Because you haven't resisted sin to bloodshed, to its limit, meaning the sacrifice of denying your flesh. You are living with a person or you are living a wrong life and you know it. And I don't want to be here listing your mistakes. No, because the Holy Spirit has to convince you. That's it. He's been convincing you. You know what is wrong. And you know what you have to do. But it hurts. Oh, Bishop, it's too painful. So what? But what do you want? Do you want to eat an omelette without having to crack the eggs? It's not possible. Either you crack the eggs to have an, a, a nice omelette, or then you keep the eggs, you keep them until they hatch. My dear friend, this is how it is. With God, that is not more or less. It's either yes or no. There has to be sacrifice. And I say it, not as a pure, let's say, sacrifice of the flesh only. It's not to get a nice amount of offering, a generous amount, and put on the altar and say, here's my sacrifice. No. If you do that, pay close attention. The sacrifice starts inside of you, denying yourself denying the things that are wrong that you have been doing. Because sin is what separates us from God. God's ears are not heavy that He cannot hear us. Neither is His powerful hand shortened that He cannot save us. But sin, He said there, your sins have separated you from me. So it's not possible for the Holy Spirit to come upon a person, even if they participate in the fast of Daniel. But if they continue in sin, they will be fasting in vain. Did you understand, my friend? I'm saying the truth this way. It even hurts, I know. I know it hurts, but I'm here teaching the way, the way to eternity, the way to eternal life. So the holy text says like this, you have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. So, perhaps you are in a relationship with sin. You don't take sin home, but every now and then you go out and you see sin outside. My friend, I'm sorry to say this. You are leading yourself to a punishment, an eternal condemnation eternal. I hope that the Holy Spirit, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit may convince you in order for you to indeed, indeed, especially in this fast of Daniel, that it may not be just a fast of information, but above all, a fast of sin which is what we have to live until the return of our Lord Jesus, okay? We are going to end it here, and tomorrow we are going to be back. May God bless you all, opening the understanding so that the penny can drop and you can then have the courage to obey, because this is faith. Faith is courage. When we have faith, we have courage. When we have no faith, then we are afraid. We become doubtful. So when we have faith, when we believe, 
when we bat in the word of God with all faith, then we obey. That's it. This is called faith. Faith is this. It's courage. Courage to do that which the flesh says no. The flesh. The flesh says no. But the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, says yes. Come because I'm with you. All right? May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.